I speak to, we speak with uh, Ronnie Lusigi, the president for the Esports Federation of Kenya. Let's uh, look at what's uh, making headlines elsewhere. That's in the world of news where we have Teresia Mutai. She's in Makweni, uh, where the wa Kenya is, uh, the celebration set to mark World Full Day is ongoing. Uh, yes, Teresia Mutai, tell us what's happening in Makweni. Well, hello there, Okumu. We are coming to you live from Makweni County. It is very hot today, but yes, we are here for the celebration of World Food Day. And uh, this is a semi-arid region. There is a lot of greenery behind us, millet. And uh, we are trying to find out how is it that in such a hot, semi-arid region, do we have such greenery? So we are linking up with uh, Rebi, Dr. Rebi Harawa, that is the director for ICRISAT. So Rebi, tell us about the theme of uh, this uh, World Food Day and also why millet? Uh, the theme of World Food Day 2023 is water is life, water is food, leave no one behind. This resonates with the work of uh, International Crops Research Institute for Semi-Arid Tropics, ICRISAT, our organization, which is actually promoting crops like millets, sorghum, which you are seeing here, crops that are resilient to droughts, crops that can grow even when you don't have enough water, but a farmer can be able to harvest. So this year's theme is where we are showcasing the improved varieties that ICRISAT and other partners such as CARO we have developed in countries like Kenya, across Africa, to make sure that farmers are able to diversify their food production, not just one crop. So they have options for sorghum, millet crops, like you're seeing here, it's very dry, but they are able to harvest. We have other crops like grain legumes, pigeon peas, uh, groundnuts, again, very resilient to droughts farmers they can still feed their families and get the excess production to markets we have therefore making places like Makweni and other dryland agroecologists become resilient even under the climate change challenges that we are actually having across the world okay speaking about the climate change uh, during the africa climate summit we had some of even the president of uh, ethiopia sales talked about look at the gaps that were there in the systems so that they could improve uh, food systems what do you think can be done within Kenya and all regions so that we ensure that uh, this is curbed I actually like the theme when it says water is life water is food leave no one behind we need to bring our youth on board the population of Africa is 60 percent young people and these are the people that are going to move Africa's food production. And so crops like this, we don't need just to bring productivity that brings just food at a household level. We need to create business. So we need to see these crops having value addition. And I'm glad that in places like Kenya, if you go to the supermarket today, you find flour for Wimby. Some of them are actually going into mandasis. They are going into chapatis. They are going into cookies. That is the business for the youth. And that's the work that we need to do across Africa, making sure that agriculture is not just for the uh, subsistence, but it becomes agribusiness. And that's one of the work that we are doing here, uh, ICRISAT, uh, the development partners, that we now have agribusiness uh, programs for these uh, dry land agroecologists, these kind of crops that we are promoting. Okay, also being the World Food Day, we are also uh, going to speak with one of the farmer because farmers are being engaged uh, today and we understand that they've been receiving sensitization and education on uh, farming in drylands. So yes, uh, we please tell us your name. Please kindly if you could come here, tell us your name and also... Uh, how have you benefited from this program? 
Uh, thank you. I'm Esther Wahita, hailing from Makweni County. I'm a youth farmer, and um, as, uh, uh, as we celebrate this World Foods Day, I'm a, uh, I'm a beneficiary. I'm glad to be uh, a, a part and a parcel of farming millets. Uh, millets, especially uh, palm millet, figure millet, and sorghum. Initially, we used to say millet, palm millet, and figure millet. They are uh, they are chicken foods. But lately, we've come to realize that these foods have a lot of nutritive value. They have a lot of uh, health benefits unto our bodies. And one thing I'm uh, uh, I'm celebrating today, as we celebrate the World Food Day, uh, through uh, benef uh, through benefited seeds that were uh, were issued out by ICRISAT through their training. Uh, they've been able to encourage us to, to, to grow these drought-tolerant crops, which have been uh, of great benefit, especially on my side. We've realized that they can withstand the tough climatic conditions of Makuheni. We can harvest larger volumes, unlike uh, maize, unlike beans. And by so doing, I came up with uh, uh, an idea or rather a business plan, and I uh, am able to man a hotel whereby we do value addition to the millets, and we get some recipes in my hotel. And I thank God because I've also created a I'm manning a, a team of around eight in my hotel. So I'm glad as we celebrate the World Food Day, I am a beneficiary and I'm so grateful. Okay, thank you so much. Well, uh, that's just a bit of uh, what is going on today during the World Food Day. We will still be coming back to, to you uh, with uh, more during the day, uh, engaging different partners and finding out what more are they doing, the kind of value addition that they are doing. Well, for now, you know who I am. Back to you in studio. I am Teresa Mutai. Well, thank you so much, Teresa Mutai, reporting from uh, Makweni, where the country is also marking the World Food Day and spoke to some of the farmers and those who are behind uh, the works of ensuring that uh, the country uh, feeds itself and, of course, uh, the nutritious uh, food so meals in the country don't uh, get extinct, but they still uh, great seeing the sorghum plantations in the background there. And, of course, it's all about uh, having such nutrition for the population.